Here's the carport that we uh, had finished uh, last year, last November, uh, 2022. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm starting to prep up the area to put a concrete driveway through. Now, what I'm gonna do to make it easier for me is actually um, divide it into eight parts or eight sections that's a little bit more manageable as a one person job, okay? Um, I did start flattening out everything. Um, it's still pretty dry. Um, so as I did use it, a, a rototiller. And um, the reason why I did that, not only to break up the dirt and flatten it, but also because this whole area at one point in time had nothing but grass. It measures uh, 24 feet, so 24 feet deep and then 14 feet wide, okay? Centers have them also. Now something I wanna point out here, I'm just gonna show you how to form up this one section, but you should get an idea about it. You can see where we've notched over the rebar and uh, I would not drill a hole through here. If you drill a hole through here, how are you gonna get the form off? Uh, so that's not gonna work. You're gonna to need to notch it and then set the form down. Now, that's what it would look like when it's ready to pour. And it's not going to be a big deal if concrete oozes into these areas here because you're going to be pouring other concrete next to it on the other side. And there's your slab. So anyway, I hope that helps. This plate compactor came in this week that I got on Amazon and my dad gave it a go. He did pretty good for the first time using it. And so here I am spacing out the number three rebar that I just purchased. They extend out to 10 feet long. By doing this, I'm able to mark the holes where I need to drill for the forms. So with those markings, my dad is drilling one inch holes. Uh, As you can tell, I did not notch underneath the rebar for each hole. Um, I figured since there's nothing really in the way, I can actually just slide the board out, okay? Um, as they get more towards the other side and further down, I would then need to notch them so I can just pop the piece of wood out. For number three rebar, I need to leave at least 18 inches outside. Um, that is the uh, minimal length if you're gonna tie the rebar together for the next run, okay? So me and my dad worked in unison while I was mixing two bags of concrete. Uh, he was spreading everything out and flattening everything. That shoot that I made, uh, I included a description uh, on the right-hand corner. Thereafter, we started screeding until we got everything completed. At this point, I started, uh, I already edged, I didn't get any video on that, but I started smoothing everything out with my trowel and then broomed to get that coarse fix um, feel. And then I re-edged again. Uh, notice how I'm lifting and as I'm pushing forward and then vice versa. Wow, that was hella hard to do. Um, and that's also with help. Um, first things first, make sure you wear longer sleeves. Uh, that was my mistake. I didn't think it would be this messy. I did wear mask um, and gloves but it doesn't matter because it still went on my skin anyway. Um, the slab took about 24 bags, 24 and a half. So say 25 bags to be able to do. Um, a lot of it went to preparation, um, which I thought was pretty hard and this was even harder. So I think what I'll do is I'll even, that slab that you see, I'm going to cut that in half. That way it's more manageable because I don't know how long my dad's gonna be here. He's gonna be going home soon. And although I do have help, everyone has, you know, their own things that they're doing. So, um, I guess we'll see what, what happens. Alrighty. <laughs> I, I, gotta, I have to get this thing done. So, uh, this is already committed. Well, thank you. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm slowly taking apart the form and sliding it out and then using my jigsaw to notch those same holes because with that, as I'm laying down the rebar, it's gonna match uh, what I done for the first slab. And so I bring the wood over and just line everything up. 
Thereafter, remember, number three rebar, 18 inches minimum for overlap, and I just tied everything in. After that, I made sure that the uh, slab was sloping towards the driveway. All right, so this is ready for uh, concrete. Uh, I didn't think it would take me this long. So um, it's already about six o'clock today and uh, I've still have yet to start dinner. <laughs> so, um, of course, the rebar, just like the initial one, which is over there, all right, um, has the rebar 18 on center, um, except for this one over here, because this was so far away from the edge. So I had to actually had to get another one and tie um, rebar in. I had some extra rebar, which is still number three, okay? So it is 18 on center. Um, and you notice over there, right in the corner, let me try to zoom in there. I actually placed a two inch PVC pipe around the um, conduit. In the event that the concrete slab does shift, it won't pull that thing away from the house. Um, so I'm not gonna really cement around it uh, where it's enclosed, um, but yet around uh, the pipe that the, um, that is surrounding the uh, conduit itself. Um, <clears throat> after this is complete, um, this has already been done. This, it's more than a week now, so it's pretty much, what, 90% of its strength. Um, I'm gonna remove this board here and then work on this one here, okay? While this one is drying, okay? Now, the form on this side, the frame on this side, it's actually the wood that I used over here. I just pretty much slid it on over, but because I won't be able to slide it out, um, I actually notched it, and this is what Greg Van Com had um, recommended. Cement will, some cement will come over this, through the hole and onto the side, but as mentioned through his video, it is gonna be concrete over anyway, okay? Okay, so um, you gotta take my word on it. I actually did do this slab on my own. Um, unfortunately, when I went to go record it with the camera, the new one that I purchased, it did not record. <laughs> so um, this one was a little bit harder, but it wasn't as messy as the first slab, because again, the first slab was a little bit more of a learning process. I was working with my dad and we're trying to coordinate each other. Um, but it came out pretty good. This is day seven now, uh, I've been watering it and then placing a tarp over it to help with the hydration process. Um, it was a lot of work, but doable. And um, looking forward to starting the next few slabs. Now it's supposed to get cooler as, as we near the end of September, but still um, warm enough for the concrete to settle. My main, main goal is at least for the first 72 hours after dropping the concrete that it stays warm. Uh, that way it doesn't freeze over and halt the uh, curing process, okay? Um, I did use a hand mixer. Let me try to get it here. I did use this thing. I've seen a lot of YouTubers using it. And um, with concrete, I want to make sure that uh, once I start the project, there's no stopping uh, until you reach the other end. Uh, so in the event that this fails, I actually bought a second one um, will I need to use it? Hopefully not, um, but at the same time, I don't want to mix or hand mix um, several bags to um, uh, complete the concrete. That's going to be a little bit too, uh, too much manpower for one person, okay? So back to the compactor, uh, making sure everything is flat. Thereafter, I start drilling holes in the new forms to be made for the next slab. And after that, notch them, and you'll see it right there where the rebar will be. I wanted to keep the uh, piers and the uh, slab uh, separate from each other um, because it will shift and move, especially with these thawing out and uh, heaving process. So I just used Loctite glue to keep it on there. Thereafter, I uh, ran the rebar all the way through and tied each one down bit of a tedious process but it has to be done soon after uh, I also added rocks on the outside of the forms to keep the rebar out okay so I have everything I need all together so I'm not searching for everything I'm gonna do this slab right now and maybe I'll get to the one behind me but 
I guess we'll see. Um, it should take me at least a couple hours for the slab, but again, it's six by seven. Alrighty. So before laying down the concrete, I wanted to make sure that everything's pretty wet. I found it a lot easier than when mixing these bags to do them in like halves. Um, that way it's not too much strain on the mixer itself. So there I am just entering, emptying the concrete into it there and then just uh, mixing it around. Soon after I just add a little bit more water and repeat the process again. I do this about 24 times. <laughs> Keep in mind, I don't have my dad with me, so um, you know, this is one way to go. I think that using the other mixer is a two-person job. And there is the final product for that slab, just watering it down and putting tarp over it to allow for the hydration process. Okay, on to slab number four. As you can tell on that right lower side, there's a little indent over there. And that's basically because that's where the driveway ends, meeting up to the carport. So with my little trowel, what I'm doing is I'm just compressing the concrete around the rebar. Uh, I do it along the whole way. Now the problem here is that that half of the slab started to set. So I needed to work on it right away. And so I edged and broomed and then edged again. And then uh, on the next slide you'll see that's one bag left to go. And it's the same process as before. Okay. Brooming it and then edging it once again. It's been close to three hours now. Um, it's still a little moist, but it's getting there. Um, obviously, this half over here is going to dry much quicker than the other one because that one was just freshly poured earlier. So as this is drying, um, I'm going to start prepping up the middle part. Now, this part's going to be a lot easier to do. is because uh, the these two slabs back here and the two on the front are already leveled with each other with a little bit of a slope towards the driveway. Uh, so that way, I don't have to do anything else, such as putting up two by sixes anymore, um, which kind of takes out a lot of the time forming the, uh, uh, the slab form, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do with this area here is the same thing, but I'm gonna offset a little bit. So rather than kind of just follow this line going across, I'm gonna set up the next slab right in the middle of it, okay? So it's still gonna be six by seven, um, slab but the uh, the two ends will be a lot shorter a lot smaller so I'm, I'm basically just cutting that in half so that won't take as much work as the larger one so I'm just measuring the uh, expansion joint for the next half slab and using rocks to keep it up towards the house and here is the uh, small part of the form that I'm removing here I am tying the rebar where to meet at every intersection and then watering the concrete slab as well as the gravel so it doesn't tap up the water from the mix. Now here's a, another angle of what I'm doing. I'm just really pressing the concrete down to avoid any air pockets as well as around the rebar for it to have a good grip. And uh, this is what it looks like now after I'm done. Okay, so I actually completed one half of the, uh, the first slab. The other half is gonna be on the other side and uh, I'll probably do like maybe sometime at the end of the week. Um, in a couple of days, I'm gonna start the middle half, okay? The uh, the half slab, I actually took my time with that. I, there was no rush and I'm still hurting from the night, the, from the day before, okay? So uh, I'm gonna give this time to dry and go on to the next uh, project. Uh, keep in mind, I'm not gonna do in the video on the other half. It's gonna be the same thing as any other slab here, okay? So I didn't find much on YouTube regarding putting a slab around the pier. So what I'm doing is I'm really keeping it separate from each other by using an expansion joint. The pier is actually below frost line, but the slab is basically just floating. So with that heaving process, it might pull or crack the slab or the pier. I thought this was helpful. And now on to slab number six, removing the forms on all sides. Notice how I'm using the uh, pry bar as well as the mallet and the ground to actually pop those forms out. Now with this form here, I'm using it on the opposite side because it has the grooves, but also making sure that it's straight because it may warp on you. I don't have a grinder, but I did use a hacksaw and uh, that's what it looks like after it's done. Thereafter, mixing the cement and patting everything down so there's no uh, voids. And um, on the next slide, you'll see I'm working into the late hours and uh, smoothing everything out. 
Okay, so I am done for the season. I still have two more slabs to go on back there. So let me kind of just walk around here and show you what I've done. Okay, so here is what it looks like in its entirety. Okay, I did not do that part down there. And the reason why is because uh, the weather just got really cold. Um, I'm doing this now into October and my last slab that I placed down is right over there. So I uncovered it, but I am using blankets and tarp to keep it warm while it's uh, curing. I, mean, I have no idea what happened here. You can tell how it's curved out. <laughs> um, this has been cured. Um, it's day seven now. So next year I'll just drop that Sika, that self-leveling. I mean, I can't really fix that anymore because what's done is done. Another mistake too is um, when you're when I was doing the slab here, um, I didn't really quite cover this area. And so when I was screeding, you'll see some of the concrete coming over to the other side um, with that two by four running back and forth. Um, so next time I know to cover it. I had planned to do it, but again, I was kind of in a chase before the weather. Uh, I was gonna get colder. So I thought maybe I can wash it off, but obviously I can't because that's a new fresh slab underneath the tarp. So special thanks out to Greg Van Com or gregvan.com. Um, you can find him on YouTube. I'll have a link for him. Others is uh, Steve from Creating Concrete, as well as Michael Bilt's funny character, but he gets his point across. And um, Zeppelin on uh, what not to do <laughs> when doing your own concrete slab. So um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Okay, bye.